Hello, my name's Alex Dinsdale and I'm from Agritech E. This film shows how Agritech E member businesses have adapted towards a more circular economy approach. The circular economy aims to reduce and eventually avoid waste altogether by reusing materials and resources as co-products and by-products. Later today, we'll be holding a live Q&A on Twitter using the hashtag CircularAg2020. We very much hope you can join us for this. You can find more information on it on the Agritech E website. Thank you very much and enjoy the film. Hello, I'm Vicky Foster, head of the British Beet Research Organisation, that's BBRO, and I'm really pleased to be participating in this conference today on Insights for Circular Agriculture. Many consumers don't realise that sugar beet is what is used to produce white granulated sugar in the UK, and this is sold under the Silver Spoon brand. UK Sugar Processing operates an advanced manufacturing model that avoids waste by turning process outputs into inputs to develop a range of co-products and is a great example of the circular economy and here are a few examples of those points. On intake, soil is washed off the beet, collected, dried and marketed to the amenity and landscaping sectors under the brand Topsoil. Similarly, stones are also collected and recovered and marketed for road building and construction industries. Limex is also another co-product that is produced as a result of using limestone and water to purify the liquid sugar in the manufacturing process. And this is widely used as a soil conditioner to amend soil pH and increase available calcium of soil. Once the sugar has been extracted from the beet, the leftover pulp is pressed to generate over half a million tonnes of high quality animal feed, which is supplied to the livestock industry by Trident Feeds. In addition, electricity and heat are also generated in the manufacturing process. And electricity is sold back to the national grid and the heat is used to power glass houses for the horticulture sector. Incredibly, the production of sugar generates less than 200 grams of waste product per tonne of sugar produced. Sugar beet is also very sustainable for the UK because it doesn't have the air miles generated with cane production. For those of you not familiar with sugar beet, it's a spring sown crop. It goes into the ground in March and it harvested between September and February. As it's a spring sown crop, it helps to spread the workload on farm and also helps to clean up land from pesky weeds and this makes it a much better condition for the autumn sown crops going in such as cereals and all seeds. Sugar beet is also an incredibly important UK habitat for pink-footed geese. In the winter, they feed on the tops that are left over on the soil surface as a vital source of food for them. In some countries, they've started to look at developing the sugar beet tops in their own right and developing them as a protein source. This has been looked at in the UK, but it's currently not economically viable. However, for the circular economy, you might say that ploughing the tops back into the land is actually a better use than developing them as another product. Unlike many crops that have struggled to continue to increase their yield over the last decade, sugar beet has managed to increase its yield by over 25%. And this is a result of dedicated breeding programmes and also good agronomy and crop management. With a limit to the amount of land available for farming, Increasing yield in a sustainable way to continue to develop more product without using more land is absolutely critical. If you'd like to know more about the activities of BBRO, then all week we are also holding our Beetfield Virtually Live event, and you can find details of this on the BBRO website. Hello, my name's Dr. Laurie Fisher. I'm a member of the Natural Resources Institute, NRI, which is part of the University of Greenwich. I'm here today to talk to you about how we aim to support the UK farming and food sector as they look to establish a circular agricultural economy. So NRI is a leader in natural resources research. Uh, we promote efficient management and use of renewable natural resources in support of sustainable livelihoods. And we have a long history supporting developing and emerging economies. We are an interdisciplinary organisation and so there are a number of ways in which we can help to inform current approaches and newly proposed strategies you might be looking at. And we can help compare and contrast the environmental and ecological value of such systems. We have socio-economic experts with experience in both value chain analysis and life cycle analysis studies. 
So you'll find me mostly at the Produce Quality Centre, and this is where we work in collaboration with NIAB EMR, and we have excellent post-harvest research facilities there, and we can look at uh, simulating storage environments uh, for produce, all kinds of produce across the whole supply chain. We've been carrying out studies to test different types of packaging to help the fresh produce sector maintain high quality and extend shelf life as they investigate alternatives to meet the UK Plastic Pact pledges. We have been working with a wide academic and commercial network to create and test recycled and compostable materials and apply them to the appropriate produce. Additionally, NRI has been developing the methodology to test recycled films for the migration of contaminants and to ensure packaging meets food grade safety standards. So to conclude, with our lengthy experience in global supply chains, we understand the complexities involved when switching to an alternative material. If you are looking to transition to alternative plastics and after advice about suitable candidates, we can help. And if you are an alternative film producer looking to work with the agricultural sector, whether it's for packaging reasons or other applications of agri-plastics, please do get in touch. Thank you. Hello, I'm Philip Simons from Prime Agriculture. We're an agronomy partnership of 11 partners working predominantly in East Anglia. I think we've been members of Agritech E for the past four to five years. We have many sources of technical information. Agritech E is probably one of the more left field areas, but we do attend some very interesting pollinator sessions with them. The one at Eastern on uh, uh, natural pesticides was particularly useful. But it's also great benefit to us to be able to visit places like the JI through Agritech E and look at some of the research work which is being carried out right on our doorstep with some fascinating scientists. And it's good for us to be able to feed back some of the technical from the front line know-how we've got so the researchers know where they're going. The concept of the circular economy is not unfamiliar to us. We're very used to using waste like composts, manures and fertilisers for best use of crops. From the very basics of using fertilisers and manures to appropriate doses and making the best use of the manure products, we're very well aware of using appropriate amounts, be it plant protection products, be it fertiliser use. Um, we don't say that people should miss out by not using enough, but we base all of our, our advice on sound scientific research, some of it from our own sister company, Prime Crop Research. Our industry is facing considerable challenges at the moment, not just Brexit and, and agricultural trade deals, but also such issues as water supply, water use, soil management and loss of soil from fields, uh, volatilisation of fertilisers, but also loss of key plant protection products. Uh, we've lost some vital tools from our toolbox and some of the things that we used to find relatively straightforward and easy to control are now becoming more difficult. The concept of the circular economy has helped our industry considerably, just for instance, fertiliser use. We use smart mapping now to variable rate apply fertilisers, which makes best use of the fertiliser and best use of the soil sample and soil analysis you've got. We have some waste and packaging issues still with the industry. Uh, I think the supply of plant protection products in the future may well move towards close transfer systems with smart mapping allowing us to uh, apply just as and when we need. I also think that genetics will come to the fore and help us out with our agricultural production in the future, more so than it has in the past. Uh, we're already seeing this with BYDV resistant and tolerant varieties in wheat and barley. 
uh, and we're having struggles to control such things as cabbage stem flea beetle and black grass and maybe genetics will help us with that in the future. So Belinda and the guys, a message from Prime is keep sending us off to your wacky um, uh, seminars because we need all the help we can get. Good day everybody, I'm Peter Vanessa and I work as a two blaze group leader in the Sainsbury Laboratory in Norwich on the Norwich Research Park. I'm also part of the management team of the Two Blaze Foundation, an American nonprofit organization that improves human well being by delivering successful, sustainable, environmentally friendly genetic solutions that increase the supply of safe and healthy food. Our key area of focus is to combat plant pathogens. Plant pathogens cost us 15% of worldwide crop production every year and can cause disastrous epidemics. Our scientific team in the Sainsbury Laboratory has a successful record of designing durable crop disease resistance solutions to these destructive plant pathogens. And this success can help farmers in the developed world and in the developing world to use less land and chemicals while achieving the same or greater level of production. So in a way, the circular economy is in the two blades own DNA because we are striving to build a world that eliminates crop waste and reduces agricultural impact on the environment and a living space, while helping farmers to remain productive and profitable. We share this goal with our long-term partner, the St. Louis Laboratory. I'm looking forward to participate and contribute to this Architect E event on the circular economy. And I will leave you with an introduction video that will give a bit more detail on the Two Blades Foundation and what we do. Two Blades Foundation aims to revolutionize agriculture to reduce world hunger. We're on a mission to rid the world of crop disease using new approaches, including our award-winning gene editing method. Major outbreaks of crop disease occur regularly, and global food losses due to crop disease is estimated at 15% of global food production. This number doesn't tell the whole story because individual diseases can cause devastating losses and entire crop failure. These losses disproportionately impact the 500 million smallholder farmers in developing countries, bringing hunger and social instability. Two Blades Foundation has advanced disease solutions to tomato, potato, cassava, and other crops. Sparing losses from these crops would benefit hundreds of millions of people. Our approach is to find and combine disease resistance genes from natural sources, introduce these into crops, so that they can resist pests without the need of any pesticides. Our success will be catalytic. It will be replicated by our partners so that they can in turn address other crops and other diseases. And our stable resistances can be introduced through conventional breeding to a wide range of crops. Hi, I'm David Jones and welcome to the Morley Agricultural Foundation here in Norfolk. We are a charity that supports agricultural research and education. So basically we give money to organisations that do field research into better ways of growing crops here in Norfolk. So some of our funds go to help students, PhDs, school children to learn more about farming. In many ways the farm is a typical South Norfolk farm. It covers 700 hectares and we grow wheat, barley, oats, maize and sugar beet. Many people consider farmyard manure a waste product, not us. We use it to help grow the crops in terms of nutrients, but also helps to improve the soil structure. But as you recognise, we don't have any livestock of our own. But what we do do, we work with a neighbour who has beef and sheep and pigs. He has our straw and we have the manure back. It then gets spread on the fields in the summer months when the fields are dry. The unfortunate thing is, it gets delivered to us throughout the year as the livestock make it. So then we have to store it somewhere and this provides quite a problem. One of the special features about this barn is that the sides don't come down to the ground and also the floor slopes to one side. So as the juice runs out of the manure, it all collects on this side of the building and slowly trickles into this holding tank. This can either be pumped out and spread on a field or taken somewhere else to another farm or another field or 
during the summer, particularly when it's very dry, the top of the heap dries out. So we use a small pump and a sprinkler and it sprinkles the liquid on top of the heap, which gets reabsorbed and or evaporates the water away. The staggering thing is, even though there's a roof on this building, the amount of liquid that comes out the bottom of the heap is quite surprising really. So if this heap was in a field, that liquid full of nutrients, uh, potentially pollutants to watercourses, would seep out either into the ground and go deep into the soil, or it would run along the surface into the nearest watercourse, polluting the watercourse. Either way, we'd be losing nutrients. This way, by keeping it contained within this building, we keep all the nutrients on the farm ready to be spread back onto the field. Thanks for watching. That's just one example of how we're trying to work sustainably and efficiently on this farm. Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Kerry Buttress, the new key account manager at Germain's Seed Technology. I would like to introduce our company profile video so you can discover more about what we do. I hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm V. Guru Rajan, Managing Director at Beehive Innovations Limited. We are an agri-tech company formed in 2017. Uh, we formed this company with the sole purpose of bringing technology and innovation into fresh produce. Uh, we work on a number of projects um, and most of these projects um, are being worked towards the following objectives. Um, either it is to reduce the food waste, increase marketable yield of the crop that we are working on, um, increase or enhance the produce quality of the product that we work on uh, and finally to bring in um, new value addition within the supply chain and this new value addition could either be a product innovation or a process innovation. Uh, for us the circular economy is all about taking a particular supply chain looking at both inputs and outputs and understanding where there is an opportunity to upcycle, uh, increase value, and then we bring in our innovation to exactly do that. Uh, just to quote as an example, uh, we've been working in the potato supply chain. Uh, we looked at um, a potato packer and their inputs and outputs in this particular instance. And we also try to look at what demand of a particular kind of product exist uh, and we tend to marry up the um, the demand of let's say plant-based proteins with 
plant-based material that we can extract protein from um, in the potato supply chain. And we take the lowest common denominator of um, the value that currently exists in the supply chain. We upcycle it and, um, and create new value product that can then cater for the demand that exists elsewhere in the industry. By doing that, we reduce the waste, increase the value, and therefore we create a full circular economy with no waste coming out of the system. It is more of a holistic approach. Um, it is a long-term approach. You've got, you got to weigh down the options of cost to benefit, making sure that you're not loading up the cost with little or no value at the end of it for the sake of circular economy. But equally, when you have an opportunity to cater for the demand that exists with taking a problem in a particular industry and using that problem or opportunity to create a solution, that's where I think the circular economy earns its value. And that's what we are doing with our potato supply chain circular economy project. Hi, I'm Ed Brannan James of the Norfolk Rivers Trust. We're a charity that was established in 2011, looking at restoring, protecting and enhancing the water environment of Norfolk and its neighbouring catchments. We work in collaboration through the catchment based approach, which means working with different organisations, businesses and sectors to improve the water quality and quantity found within our catchments which are home to some of the world's rarest and most precious chalk streams. Our role is to provide education, knowledge exchange and nature-based solutions. We do this through a mix of measures, um, such as our water sensitive farming initiative, which has worked with the private sector and land managers to offer soil and water advice and a set of interventions on farm. This has been supported by organisations and businesses such as the WWF, Coca-Cola, Tesco's and other retailers through the Courtauld 2025 initiative, which is looking at reducing um, the amount of water used and improving the quality of water um, through working in partnership. These partnerships are absolutely key and through the Cameo Water Stewardship Board We've also been working with several different businesses within the region um, in terms of producing and offering advice and interventions. Within the east of England, we've also pioneered constructed wetlands, uh, wastewater discharge points for Anglian water. Um, and these wetland cells have not only improved the water quality, but also improved the biodiversity and captured carbon at the same time. We believe that nature-based solutions, working in partnership um, and collaborating on projects are key. Um, the circular economy going forward, I think, is going to play a key part in improving the sustainability of businesses and improving the environment. Um, I think if we can reduce inputs but at the same time, having a closed system where we can recycle and reduce pollution um, will not only improve soil and water um, and areas such as carbon, um, but also make businesses more resilient. Um, working as well with people such as uh, Agritech East, where we can um, collaborate on projects with different sectors, therefore bringing in different skills um, and looking at data and knowledge exchange um, are going to be positive steps to the future. Welcome to the new digital agriculture workflow, integrating multiple pieces into one solution for smarter and more sustainable farming. Today's farm decisions need to happen in an instant with the right tools and data when and where you need them the most. PIX4D technology harnesses the power of drone and sensor solutions to make operations and data gathering as simple as possible. Drones are tools that address multiple fields of application, including 
crop scouting and analysis through to damage reporting and variable rate mapping. With our technology, digital mapping gives you better insight into your crops from above and serves as the foundation for your groundwork. PIX4D software solution for agricultural mapping PIX4D Fields is central to the workflow of farmers and service providers working as a toolkit, which evolves with our users' needs to improve farm productivity and potential. With decisions being made in field, PIX4D Fields can help you go from images to insightful maps in an instant. When it comes to crops, we know the importance of boots on the ground, so we developed PIX40 fields to bridge the gap between the visible and the invisible, helping deliver further data to your existing workflows. With PIX40 fields, you can access your project data both in the field and in the office. To enable faster decision-making and operation planning, streamlined across locations, our data sync feature allows you to effortlessly share your data across multiple devices and stakeholders in your organization. PIX40 Fields focuses on making data intuitive and easy to interpret, helping you take your knowledge to the next level by correlating what you know with what the maps show. With PIX40 Fields, you can analyze and share farm and field insights with relevant stakeholders to interpret and access, giving you the information you need to make the best decisions. Advanced features such as the Zonation tool turn index maps into zones for your prescription rates. Maps generated in PIX4D fields need to be useful, manageable, and easy to connect with your existing farm machinery and tools used in field. PIX4D fields exports can be uploaded to most major farm management platforms for further insights, or directly to your tractor terminal. Whether you're trying to provide a better service to the farmers you work with, or aiming to improve yield, quality, or reduce cost, PIX40 Fields is here to work for you. With PIX40 Fields, create and analyze real-time maps of your crops. Tackle your everyday challenges like crop protection, breeding, digital scouting, insurance, crop production, irrigation, and erosion control for you or your clients. See your crops like never before. Hi, my name is Sean O'Keefe and I'm the CEO and founder of COGS. Uh, and COGS is an online marketplace that helps food processors to buy surplus produce directly from British farmers. And we are really, really excited about taking part in the Innovation Insights for Circular Agriculture event because the circular economy is, is key to what we do. We help farmers to sell produce that is at risk of becoming waste back into the food supply chain. 
So we can sell apples to juicing or carrots that are surplus to requirements to soup manufacturers or to, to ingredients processors who might cut that carrot up and sell it into to a food manufacturer and it'll end up in a ready meal. Or for example, at the moment, there's so much soft fruit that we can sell that into uh, frozen food processors who can individually quick freeze that produce and then sell it on as smoothie bags or into frozen desserts. So whatever we do, we try and get that produce back in the, the food supply chain and create a more sustainable supply chain. Cox's platform is designed to be straightforward and easy to use. To access the platform, simply go to www.cogs.co. Once you have signed up for free as either a grower or a processor, you can then log into the platform. Growers can upload produce that they are looking to sell, and processors can browse the platform for produce that they are looking to buy. As a processor, once you have found what you are looking for, click on the product to see more details to help inform your purchasing. Here you can see variety, class, accreditation, size, as well as price, minimum orders and delivery information. If there is any more information you want to know, feel free to use our chat function. Once you have decided you are happy with the produce, simply pick how many tonnes you wish to buy and click add to cart. The rest is easy. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed the film. Later today at 2pm, the Angry Techie member businesses who contributed to that film will be on Twitter as part of a Q&A discussion session that AgriTech E is hosting. We'd love it if you could join us. You'll get the chance to ask questions to those businesses and to have a more broader general discussion on the circular economy and agriculture. The hashtag for this discussion is CircularAg2020. Thank you very much for watching.